Welcome. Uh, this is Jerry Mancini. I'm the CEO at Fidelis Cybersecurity. And today we're going to talk about network traffic analysis and try to answer the question of why it's a critical component for your cyber defense uh, security solution. First thing we're going to talk about is, you know, what is network traffic analysis? This picture is showing an on-premise solution where you've got a computer on your lower left talking to the internet through a firewall. For an on-prem solution, you're trying to protect high value assets. You're looking at your network traffic. You're trying to look for things that are malicious in the environment. You're looking for anomalies. You're looking for threats. Decryption is important because you need visibility into what's going on. So TLS level decryption is a part of the solution. It's a necessary part so that you can see the traffic that's inside your network and across your network. As more and more companies move to the cloud, the cloud is also an important aspect of when you're talking about network traffic analysis. Are you able to look at the computer that's talking out to the internet, which then is looking at your assets that are in your cloud, your databases, your secure information that's there. So whether it's an on-premise solution, a cloud solution, or a hybrid solution, network traffic analysis is all about analyzing the traffic to look for anomalies, look for malicious behavior, look for things that are security problems in your environment. So how do we define NTA? Uh, we took these bullets out of a Gartner report that came out in February of 2019. It's basically about analyzing raw network traffic. So it's not about looking at NetFlow or summarize traffic, but looking at the raw network traffic with the ability to monitor and analyze north, south, and east, west, as we showed on the first slide. The ability to model that traffic, know what's normal, and highlight anomalies. To be able to apply behavioral techniques, which are not signature based, and also be able to emphasize threat detection phase of an attack. So it's not necessarily about the forensics and what happens afterwards and proving that you have a threat, but it's about detecting that the threat occurs in the first place. Uh, but it's more than just detecting anomalies. From a Fidelis standpoint, uh, when you detect one of these anomalies, there's a lot of questions that you have to answer next. Why is this important? Why did it happen? What, how did you derive normal? Why is this different than normal? There's many questions that you gotta answer for an effective solution. If you have a solution that's just applying machine learning models and artificial intelligence, and the analyst is looking through this and asking more questions that are answered, then it's not gonna be an effective solution. So while you're analyzing the traffic, you gotta be able to decode the content. You have to know what's inside the content that's going across the network. You can't just worry about who's talking to who and what's happening there. The content matters a lot. You need to be able to extract enough information about the network flow so that you can answer who, what, where, when, and how this information was flowing. So that when you find an anomaly, you can easily answer and derive and figure out what you need to do next. So the question is, what is an anomaly? An anomaly is really a picture of looking at environments, looking at uh, behaviors that occur on your, on your network. Try to come up with a seven, 14 day period of analysis where you define normal. And then as you move forward in time, you're looking at what's different from what's normal. Obviously, when you first install this situation or in install a solution like this, it's gonna take a little time to really know what's normal. So as you look at anomalies, you need to be able to tune the models. You need to be able to help the solution learn from uh, manual intervention and to be able to know what's going on in the environment. But more importantly, when you have one of these red blocks, which is highlighting anomalous activity, you need to be able to dig into it and know exactly why the model fired on something. Reasons are presented to you, information is presented so that you can analyze this, you can digest the information, you can learn what the model did and why the model came up with the answer that it did, which you can then go and, uh, and understand uh, more about. You may also need to look at the asset. Where is this anomaly coming from? What's happening? Uh, historical view over any particular asset in the environment is really important. What anomalies has it hit in the past? Is there a risk associated with this asset because of other activity that you know? Do you know of known vulnerabilities that exist on this asset? Or can the software know about it? And does that come into the risk calculation? Do you know about uh, signature-based analysis or other types of information that have told you that there have been problems with this particular asset or the user that is using this asset. 
what attacks are underway, what's happening here. A risk analysis per asset goes a long way to helping to understand what the anomalies are that are occurring on that asset and what you may need to do about it. Risk is also an important way to look at network traffic analysis in the sense of what assets are communicating to other assets. We can look at a map like this one that's highlighted on one subnet that highlights a, a risk calculation for the different subnets. Uh, red is higher risk, green is lower risk. There's a yellow risk that's kind of in the background, um, but understanding what ports and protocols are open, how is communication happening across these subnets, how are these subnets communicating with each other? And when you start asking about anomalies and looking at what's different today than happened over the course of the last couple of weeks, uh, this helps you really understand more and more about your environment. And it helps you to understand why, why these anomalies matter and what you need to do about them. Again, keep coming back to what you need to do about the anomalies is a big part of network traffic analysis and being presented with enough information so that you can take action. Metadata is something that Fidelis provides. What this really represents is looking at the network, extracting over 300 different uh, parameters about what occurred there. So we're gonna dig into every network action. We're gonna be able to show that graphically. You're gonna be able to query the database. You're gonna be able to use this information to truly understand why this anomaly occurred and what, you need, what next steps you need to take about it. The metadata is really important. So we're gonna start by understanding the application protocol. Let's say it's HTTP. We'll extract a couple of dozen different parameters about HTTP. Uh, what server were you accessing? Was it a post? Was it a get? What's the URL? What's the user agent string? Et cetera, et cetera. We're then gonna go into the content. If we see a file going across the network, let's say it's a zip file, we're gonna look inside the zip file. We're gonna find all the PDFs or Word documents or Excel documents, everything that's there. We're gonna find zip files within zip files. We're gonna take everything apart until we understand all the content. So if I find a Word document that has an Excel document inside it, that has a, uh, an auto-executing script inside there that might be malicious, you need to be able to understand this entire path and present it all. That in itself is an anomaly, finding a script inside a Word document that was inside a zip file may be an anomalous activity that we wanna be able to find and highlight. But preventing, presenting it in this graphical view shows you everything that's going on and you can bring your cursor across every one of these blue lines that you see on the right here, which is showing you communication path between one IP address and another, highlighting exactly what was going on in that, in that communication. Uh, and as you highlight over each one of them, this, this uh, pop-up menu will come up, which shows everything that we've discovered there, including information about the assets. You have your NetFlow data up on the top right, but you're digging into more and more data that's presented to you. And this is the type of data that also plays into your machine learning algorithms when you're looking for anomaly. So it's not just about looking at the NetFlow data, the ports and protocols, and understanding who's communicating to what. That's part of it. But it's also understanding what kinds of files the size of those files, what's included in those files, are there scripts embedded in, in other files, uh, is there malware that's included, uh, and then can we map this into something like the MITRE ATT&CK framework to show you different stages that are going on and find anomalies based on different stages of an attack uh, that are happening. So NTA is really about analyzing the network traffic, but also analyzing it in a way so that any anomaly that's found can answer the question for you present by presenting enough data, showing it to your analysts so you can figure out who was sending this information, what were they sending, where were they sending it, when did this happen, and how did it occur? Very important because the next step you're gonna wanna do is to integrate this solution and the detections that it makes with other automated remediations like an EDR product like a SIM, like a SOAR, uh, so that you can take automated actions based on the anomaly that you detected here. If you're not collecting enough information and you're not collecting enough information to make a rational response, then anomaly detection is just gonna create noise for you. Why does it become a critical component of your cyber defense? 
it's really, you know, when you're looking at the network side, the thing to understand is their foot, the attacker always leaves footprints across the network. It's easier to hide things on an endpoint. It's easier to make a piece of malware look, look like it's non-malicious, make it look like it's a regular process. But on the network, you see everything that's going across the network, whether you're sitting in the cloud or on-prem. The NTA needs to become a critical component of your cyber defense as it can be there to detect things on the network, create the fast answers about who, what, where, when, and how, and provide reaction by integrating with an EDR or other types of products. The last thing to show is uh, Fidelis is a, we provide a network solution that is an NTA. We also have an EDR solution. We also have a deception solution. Uh, these come together in a uh, platform that we call Fidelis Elevate. It brings these different components together. This talk has been purely about the network traffic analysis, but when you start looking at the way that you can come up with interesting ways to integrate an EDR solution and a deception solution with what you learn from an NTA perspective, uh, it becomes an interesting solution. And we would love to do a proof of concept or a demo. And you can find us on the internet at fidelisecurity.com and uh, click the schedule a demo if you're interested. Um, questions can be entered in the uh, menu on your left, on the box on the left, and that will be routed to us by email, and we will do our best to answer your questions as quickly as possible. Thank you for your time today. It's been a pleasure to talk about network traffic analysis, and we hope that this has provided a little bit of education about what this market is about and how Fidelis approaches it. Thank you.